Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever it is in your corner of the world. Today we're going to do a quick review of the Skag SWZT 36 inch walk behind mower. This is a hydraulic walk behind mower. I um, had a viewer recently who asked if, if I could do a review on this mower. So, uh, disclaimer, it's got 6.7 hours on it. So I've had enough time on it to get comfortable with it, to get comfortable with the controls, to get a good feel for the mower. Um, and I'm about to do the, the break-in oil change on it. Um, so technically I should have done this video after that, so that way I can also give you guys a little bit of an overview on maintenance. Uh, but, what are the types of yards this thing's good for? What do I like about this mower? What do I not like about this mower? What did it cost me? Um, so, to give you some background, one of the videos that I want to do up soon is I've used, started with belt drive walk behinds, uh, progressed into zero turn riders, I've used uh, hydraulic walk behinds, I've used standers, and ultimately I've come back full circle to the, uh, the hydraulic walk behind. Uh, and, and I'm very happy with that progression. I'm doing yards that are traditionally somewhere between five and 10,000 square feet yards around here. A couple that are a little bit bigger, a couple that are a little bit smaller, but that's my area residential only. Um, so 36 to me is the sweet spot. I have found that you can get into almost all gates with the 36 inch. They're fast and efficient. And instead of having, like I used to run a 36 and a 48, I save a lot of time by just running 36 and not having to, to switch over. The biggest feature and the reason why I purchased this mower was the adjustable deck height uh, on this thing. With the adjustable deck height, perfect example of, in my mind, the necessity and the usefulness of this feature is, I had a yard earlier, and it's a weird property, it's a lease, but the front yard is irrigated in 100% St. Augustine, the backyard is non-irrigated and it's about 20% St. Augustine, 80% just complete total trash weed. So literally when I go on that property, I'm mowing the front at three and three quarters inches, but I'm mowing the back, mowing all those weeds down to two inches. And so I'm switching a lot. I, I go to a St. Augustine yard that the, they want cut high like mine, where I cut mine at four inches or four and a quarter inches. And then the next thing I know, I'm going to a Bermuda yard where I'm cutting at, uh, say, two inches. And so the adjustable deck height on the fly is a great feature of this mower. You've got the pins where you can sit there and adjust the individual deck height. The, uh, the deck kind of floats a little bit, but honestly that's a gimmick on a 36 inch deck. You shouldn't be scalloping. I mean that. But I don't believe any other uh, walk behind mower at this uh, width is offering the adjustable deck height on the fly. A lot of them are the, the, the caster spacers that you have to sit there and adjust and take the front casters off and on when you want to change height. And then still others like Ferris has the pin system where you have to adjust the deck by pulling pins out. This is just fast. Now one thing that could be improved on this is you do have to sit there and reach down and across. Uh, it's, I, I would love it if somehow that level was further back so you could kind of adjust or pull up on the deck while you're operating your mower. You know, you come to a stop and you just want to go ahead and pull up the transport height. But that's just a minor gripe. As far as maintenance goes, uh, four screws, thumb or hand up, screws to get the deck off. This particular mower uses a non-greased spindle, so one less thing you have to worry about. Good or bad thing, will you know, time will tell. But she's got a uh, simple pulley system there. Easy to clean the deck, easy to work on the deck, everything's right out there. The belt deck layout's right there for you. Easy to work with. Skag, to my knowledge, uses three different decks. You've got the Velocity Plus deck, which is the top tier deck and arguably one of the finest cutting decks next to the John Deere 7 iron. You have their Advantage deck, which does have the flat front to it. And then finally, you have this, you know, their, their old standard deck. I personally have no complaints. This deck spits the grass out, um, doesn't clump on me, uh, performs well. It's a seven speed mower and traditionally I'm mowing at three if, if the grass is really tall, really wet, really thick, four um, 
is about the top speed that I'm comfortable with walking behind it. Obviously, I don't use a Velky because, you know, I, I could stand to be a little bit more physically fit. Uh, anything five, six, or seven. Five is like that borderline. If you're really peppy and you're really wanting to move, you can do it. But you're going to be taking some big strides. and You better be a tall guy. Um, at, at 5'11", I'm not comfortable mowing at 5 for any length of time. And then 6 and 7 are just run to keep up with the mower. So typically I'm cutting it at a 4 speed on it. Um, but yes, no complaints with the deck. This mower does use the Hydra Gear 2800 series uh, transaxles. They're a little bit difficult to get to in the back. Uh, they've got protective shrouds over the top of them. Jury's still going to be out. I trust transaxles. And it's, it's a very light mower, which is another big reason why I purchased this thing. We'll talk about that later. But the, the drives, I don't think that they're going to have a problem pulling an operator unless you're a four or 500 pounder with a 500 pound mower. The, the cooling on these things is pretty impressive. The fans move a lot of air. When you're mowing, even when you're not mowing, you're moving around. There's like two or three feet behind the mower where you'll see the grass just kind of spitting and fluttering from those cooling fans. They move a lot of air. Everything on the engine is very easy to access. Spark plugs, carburetor, the uh, air filter here on the top, very easy to get to. Uh, pull start, just you know, very easy pull on this thing, gets it going. You have a fuel gauge on top of the, the tank. It's easy to read from the operator position, know how much you've got. There is no fuel shutoff on this thing. You have a fuel pump on the side of the motor. It's very easy to get to. You have the inline fuel filter is easy to get to. And the, uh, I guess the carbon filter for the fuel tank vent is easy to get to. Everything's easy to get to. The only belt that would be difficult to mess around with is the drive belt. And that's an area where I, I have some questions. This thing, when it's running cold, it's fine. When it's running hot, if you idle all the way down, there is some squeaking that I can hear coming from the drive belt. So I don't know if maybe something's not adjusted right or if that's just the way it is. Time will tell. I haven't heard of a lot of complaints of SWZT owners with drive belts failing. So that, that might be nothing. Um, the, so let's talk about the weight of the mower. This is just over 500 pounds, and this is a big reason why, in my mind, the perfect mower, the absolute best mower you can get is a 36 inch standard. That is the ultimate in just efficiency. Those things can go everywhere. They don't scalp, they're fast, they're convenient. You can get on and off real quick to move obstacles. They're great mowers, but they are too heavy right now. Skag, Gravely, Hustler, please listen if you watch this video and, and, and get back to the drawing board. I would sacrifice an operator panel or even a little bit longer mower if the operator panel had to be pushed back to where the, the operator was out from between the wheels. Give us bigger tires. This guy weighs about 550 something pounds and the drive tires are about six inches. Now aesthetically, you know, I guess we go with, uh, function over form, they work. They kind of look a little bit dinky, they're a little bit narrow, but they work. But they don't, I, the jury's still out on whether or not they're gonna rut, but I highly doubt they will on, on a mower that's this weight. Whereas on a stander, you're talking about a stander that weighs an additional two or 300 pounds more than this. Typically they weigh seven to 900 pounds. Then you add an operator like myself that's 250 pounds, and you've got a mower that's flirting with or over 1,000 pounds. And most of the 36s have eight inch drive tires or eight and a half inch drive tires, whereas this has a six inch drive tire and weighs literally uh, almost less than half of what a standard weighs. So my experience with the standards in my area, which is favorable to standards because we have a, a, a light top soil and a very hard rocky gravel clay mix below the soil. It's the best conditions you can have for a standard. The more dark earth soil you have, the more you're likely to rut. And for me at least, I was too heavy of an operator on a 36 inch to, to mow, even varying up the patterns without that thing rutting over time. So 36s, I love them, but that's why I went with a walk behind. And if I ever do get busier and busier and I need a Velky, I can always throw a Velky on this thing. Another thing is cost. Um, these mowers, I think I wanna say it was around, um, I think retail's like 5,200. And of course, Skag has an awesome, Skag's taking care of, uh, 
police officers, firefighters, EMS, you can get a 15% discount on it. So I, I looked them up and I think the sales price on it was 4,500, but you don't get the 15% off that 4,500. You get the 15% off of the retail price, which I think was like 52 or something like that. Either way, you know, the mower is, was roughly around five grand. Uh, I think, I wanna say it was around five grand. I have to go look at the receipt, but either way, good deal on it. Build quality, the metal, like on the sides, it is a thin, not a thin, but it's, you know, it's not like tubular, all of it's, it's, it's flat plate, but it's very wide flat plate. So I have no reason to doubt the, the quality and durability of the mower. The one thing about this mower is it's very long. You notice that when you're driving down this, you know, between a house and say the, the side of the house and the fence, you need to turn around or when you are, um, like say you're mowing a boulevard at curb's edge and it's it, it's let's say it's a uh you know 48 inch wide boulevard so you make one pass and you turn to make your secondary pass um and you kind of got to manipulate the mower deck over the edge so you're not going into the cus the, the neighbor's yard and you kind of kind of hold the mower and suspend the deck in midair because the front casters are way off the curb of the roadway now it is a uh, a long mower you do have to get used to that uh, I, but again i also have to admit i'm coming from a standard so I have a bias there of short compact mowers. So this is a very long mower. Okay, so let's talk about visibility here. Uh, what I'm holding the camera at roughly about where I, um, my head is on this thing. And the only complaint that I have about this is up in the front there. If you're approaching something like a sewer clean out, it is difficult to kind of gauge where the deck is on the front of this mower because it's recessed underneath that front lip here you can see that your visibility of that is blocked. So that's the one thing you kind of got to get used to. Otherwise, e easy to see what you're coming up to and you know, you, you got a good visibility here. It's not as good as a standard, but obviously um, nothing's gonna be as good as a standard. I love standards. Skag, go copy Bad Boy. If they don't have a patent on it, go figure out what's going on with Bad Boy. I hate these plastic flaps. I took the spring out, as you guys can see, and by the weight of it, it falls down. But the same thing on the bad boys, the weight of the, the, the thing will, will pull it down. But you can, they, they push these hinges further out of the mower so you can fold this back and then it'll just hold with its weight. Whether it's my choice, put your warning labels all over this thing that say, do not operate without this thing down, you know, or you're, you're dead to us. But give me the choice. When I go up on the trailers, I don't like to have stuff bungee corded and I have a 25 inch mower that pulls right up next to this. I want this up and out of the way. When I've got to go through gates, I want to be able to fold this thing up so that I can get through a 42 inch gate without trouble. I, I do not like this flap. These hard plastics tend to rip and pull on gates. That rubber that, that Bad Boy uses, Bad Boy is doing a better grass flap than anybody else out there. Copy them if you can. Um, one thing I didn't go over earlier, the hydraulic uh, releases for the transaxles are right here. And you got another one on that side in case you need to put them in neutral. Let's go take a look underneath the mower. Ouch. Just smack my. So underneath the mower here, you've got these, this plate steel to protect the transaxles. They are pretty low to the ground, so that's kind of nice. Um, you've got the drain plugs in here, they're not too terribly easy to get to, but they're not the worst things in the world either uh, when it comes to doing any type of a draining on these, uh, these transaxles. I don't believe that the 2800s have an uh, oil filter on them that's serviceable. If I was a nice professional reviewer, I'd have already looked at this, but you guys know what to expect here. Um, I, yeah, I don't see. Okay, no, they do. There is a, um, I don't think there's any way I'll be able to show you. You would have to take the tire off. There is a, uh, a filter right up there where my hand is. It's got a guard that's protecting it. It doesn't look like it'd be too terribly hard to get to. You just have to take the tire off if you were gonna change that, uh, that fluid out. Obviously easy to get to, oil filter on this side, and then you've got the little drain spigot. They put a little hose here. So basically you can just take a big flathead screwdriver and turn that. 
position that hose, um, that oil drain hose, change oil out. So maintenance on this guy is just super simple. Uh, I, I like this, good and bad. This is the uh, the overflow reservoir for your your two twenty eight hundreds. And what Skag did is they just combined all into one. I like that for the simplicity of all of my fluid in one place. The, the, the only disadvantage I can see is if you've got a slow leak in one of those hydraulics, you're not gonna know which one. If it's a very minute leak, it's something that you wanna get ahead of and have that, that transaxle pulled and serviced before it actually fails on you, and it's just starting to leak and it's not blatantly obvious where it's leaking below, you wouldn't know which one was leaking the fluid by having only one reservoir. So that is uh, one thing that I, uh, I, I, like, I like the simplicity and having just one for convenience, but if something were to go wrong, I could see that being a problem. Inevitably, you'll always have one transmission that's performing differently than the other. So transmission adjustments on this thing, you've got easy access right here to a lock nut and some threads so you can adjust the, the, um, the length of the control rod that goes down. And then down here at the actual transmission itself, it's very easy to get to and move. They've got a couple different uh, holes that you can put the um, this little control plate in so that it pulls either more or less on the transmission. I have found mine to be working just fine and don't need any adjustment, but all of that stuff is fairly easy to get to. Also, your switches up here, your parking brake safety switch there, and then your PTO and your ignition switches here. All Everything is easy to get to on this mower. So let's talk about the operator controls here. Um, Skag went with this internal operator control to handles. Still getting used to that. Um, they say you know to keep it out here so you're not hitting your hands on stuff, and I agree, I like that. Um, these operator presence controls, this is a very thin metal, it feels flimsy to me. I don't like that for as much as I'm paying for the mower. I wish these were a little bit more robust. Um, the tension. To, to operate the controls. The tension on these things is not bad, the resistance to, to adjust it. And for those of you guys who aren't used to hydraulics and you're trying to decide between a belt and a hydro, if you're in it for the long run, buy the hydro, man. You can't beat having power reverse. But these, these controls take very little manipulation. The translation down the linkage is there, the hydro pumps, everything moves in a very, very minuscule amount to adjust forward and back. So when you initially start operating this thing, you're gonna have a little bit of a jerk to it um, as, as you slowly start to get a feel for the hydros, but I, I definitely feel like the resistances are good. I try and hold my hands up higher on the control panels here. That way um, I've got more leverage and trying to squeeze down here. The one thing that's uncomfortable about this, and maybe this will break in over time, is I don't find the, the handles, the fingertip handles, to be uncomfortable. What I do find is the back of my palm where it rests on here does get uncomfortable over time. You've got these little locks here to, to lock it in the neutral position, so those are nice and easy to use. Um, you, your neutral all the way to seven. Your parking brake is down here. Uh, ignition, PTO, and choke an hour meter. Kind of a funky setup here. I wish Skag could take a look at this and figure something out. So to start this mower, parking brake engaged, transmission in neutral, blades off, key on, pull, start, choke, whatever. But to get it to go and to drive, you have to release parking brake, then shift, then, you know, go. Now, if for whatever reason you're sitting there and you go to reach, it takes a little while to get used to. If you go to put the parking brake on, I get it. I don't want to burn the transmissions up by putting the parking brake on while this thing's still in gear. But this will immediately kill the mower if you do this. So when you first start operating this thing, you've always got to get used to, oh yeah, neutral first. And I'm still to this day making this mistake. A lot of times on, I, I wish there was a little bit different system than this parking brake system that's on here. But um, yeah, no, no real complaints with the operator controls. It's easy. And like I said, I normally operate in, uh, in speed number four. So as far as the deck adjustment goes, the deck is suspended at four points by chains. And you can see here, very easy to adjust the pitch of the deck four back left to right however you need to adjust that. The linkages are, are fairly straightforward and simple. Not a whole lot of effort.
to uh, to release the deck. One thing I will say is I do like this. This this just the weight of this naturally falls. So when you do want to go to transport height, you just pull the lever back, and that will naturally that clip will just fall in to place. So that is easy. But here's the top of the deck. Okay, so maintenance air filter, and if you're working in dusty, dry climates where the grass is, you know, uh, flinging up on the engine and the intake. Uh, you got quarter turn releases there. This pops off. You've got a pre-filter and then a paper filter element here. And then cool thing here, take your blower and just blow right down. You blow the, uh, the uh, piston cover fins get blown right out of there. So nice thing. That's a, of course, that's a Kawasaki thing, but nice and easy. It is one thing that I like about the walk behind also over the standards is the standards are very compact. It's one of the things that everybody loves about them, but on a walk behind, the mower engine is far out here, whereas on a stander, a lot of times the operator control platforms come right over the midsection of the engine, so it's a little bit harder to work on the engines. This guy is easy to get to everything. All right, let's get a little mower point in for any of you guys who are thinking about buying one of these things. I want to try and be as detailed as I can. So this thing did go out this morning, mowed three properties that were very, very wet. So you can kind of see on here, I haven't cleaned it. This is kind of the... Uh, the areas of the the underside of the deck where grass is going to kind of accumulate and need to be cleaned off there but uh, otherwise easy easy to get to everything and then obviously here you can see with this thing up on the jack um, your blade layouts your blade clutch your blade clutch right there front and center easy to kind of get to this thing probably I'm guessing could be lifted with a jack in the front and then more than likely a jack here in the back underneath this plate. I think this plate's thick enough steel that you could justify lifting it from that. Um, uh, Skag may or may not recommend that. Here you can see the, uh, the uh, shields for your, um, your transaxle, your hydro gear. Huh, it's kind of weird they don't label those things. Easy to read. Exactly what so you're gonna focus on that? You're not gonna focus on that anyway, easy to read, but yeah, taking the tire off four bolts, you better get to those oil filters fairly easy. I like the fact that they do have the oil filters. You got these uh these metal brackets here running off the back of the deck to kind of stop the deck from swaying. I think that's pretty impressive that Skag did that on something as simple as a 36 inch deck. Uh, again, to add some rigidity to the drive line, you've got this uh cross member running between the two transaxles there keep those things from flexing so um, interesting there but yeah that's the uh, that's the drive system and everything underneath here am I zoomed out yeah, I zoomed out that's the underside of the mower so I hope that you found this video useful I think I've covered all the bases if I didn't or I missed something I'm probably gonna cry so the last thing I want to do is shoot this video again but if you do have any questions please post them in the comment section below and uh, I'll try to get them answered uh, love the mower. Uh, if I had to do it again, I would absolutely purchase one again. Um, until the 36-inch standards get larger drive tires, uh, I just can't justify a 36-inch. So this walk behind is both good for me physically and a great mower for the turf just because of its lightweight, the cost, the value, the construction, the adjustability on the deck. I, I, I have loved this. Uh, one other last thing that I want to mention before I go is that the only grease points on this mower are your front, uh, your front um, casters. There is literally no other grease points in the mower. None of the pulleys, the belt tensioners, nothing on this thing is greasable outside of those casters. Um, so again, if you have any questions, let me know. Thanks for watching. Hope you guys find it useful. We'll see you all around on the next one.